Hiya, I'm Davin at brewbits.com. Behind the camera we've got James. Say hello James. Today I thought we would brew up an American oak rum ale kit from Young's. It's pretty potent, it's 6.5%, but I've been hearing quite a lot of good reviews about it from people that have bought it from us in the shop and bought it online and been saying it's really, really good, you should really give it a go. So I thought we would. A few things we're gonna to need to be able to brew it up. Uh, we're obviously gonna need a bucket, we're going to need a jug, we're going to need a siphon, a spoon, a thermometer, a hydrometer, a little trial jar as well for testing, uh, popping the hydrometer in. And then at the end of it, we're going to need uh, one of two things to put it in. We can either use a pressure barrel um, or bottles. It's up to you. Right, let's get brewing. First thing to do is let's familiarise ourselves with what's in the box. It's a bit of a krypton factor to get into these, but once you're in... Excellent, so we've got our instructions. We've got a big bag, that is a big bag, of malt extract. We've got a little small bag of priming sugar for our secondary fermentation. We've got our yeast. Ah, we've got a big bag of American oak chips. And we've also got a big bag of brewing sugar. Okay, now we've got all that in, it's time to get brewing. The first thing we need to do is to get into this pouch. So, we're gonna need a pair of scissors. We're gonna carefully cut the top off without letting it fall over. This is going to be really gooey, and I mean gooey. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, what the smell. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Right, this is unbelievably thick stuff in this one. I'm just gonna start rolling it like you would do a, a tube of toothpaste. Okay. All right, but there's still quite a bit in there. There's a couple of ways we can get it out. My favourite way is using a good old rolling pin. Literally just get the rolling pin and roll it all the way. Right. I can see we'll lose more still trying to go. <laughs> <laughs> See, what's all that extra goodness? Oh. oh, look at that. Right. Time to wash my hands. Now we've got our lovely gloop in the bottom of our bucket. We need to add our packet of oat chips. Really simple. Open it up. Oh my goodness, they're dark. Mm. And now I'm going to put the kettle on because I'm going to need three litres of boiling water. The kettle's still boiling, so I thought I'd take a quick chance and get myself by the side. I am from Somerset after all. Right. I've already got two litres in there. This is the last of the three litres of boiling water. 
and it goes. Oh. Now, if you've ever done any woodwork and had to saw up wood, I get lovely those lovely smells from it. I get in the gorgeous smells as if. Well, basically, as if you're you're drinking a, a bottle of rum. <laughs> Right, we need to give this a good stir until all the gloopiness is being dissolved in. This takes a bit of a while. And make sure you get all the stuff from around the edges, all the stuff from the middle. And even when you think you've got it all, you'll suddenly come across a big lump in the middle that you need to uh, get incorporated. Keep going till it's all stirred in. Now that's all stirred in, we're happy. Comes time for the bag of big sugar, the big bag of sugar. Open it up. And pour it all in. This is brewing sugar, it's different from your supermarket sugar. It's already broken down into its constituent parts, which means the yeast can get to it faster. And there's also, it doesn't have the little taint um, that granulated sugar from the supermarket does to help make it taste sweeter. Feel free, have a try of it, see if it tastes different. But what we need to do is stir it in and keep going until it's all dissolved. Because it's brewing sugar as well, brewing sugar dissolves a lot, lot quicker because it's a lot finer than normal granulated sugar. But still, make sure it's fully incorporated. Now you can see how dark this is. This is going to be a really dark beer, really dark beer. If you don't get in on wicky lens, James. Now we've got all the sugar incorporated, we need to top it up to 23 litres with cold tap water. I'm quite lucky, I've got an extendable hose on my tap, which makes my life a bit easier. If not, you're going to have to use a jug and fill it up yourself. As you can see, I've brought it up to the 5 gallon mark, 23 litre mark with cold tap water. And now, we need to give a Good mix in to make sure everything's mixed together. So all your work at the bottom is mixed in with your, your water that you just poured in. And now, once we've got it all mixed in, we now need to get going and really get some oxygen into it. Wait. Good stirring, really get it working. Need to do this for a couple of minutes. And get a good froth on the top like this. You're trying to basically get oxygen into it so that the yeast can really, really get to work. You'll find your own technique. You'll find it's a blooming good workout. All we need to do now, giving it a good stir, is we need to check the temperature of our 2B beer. So that we make sure that the temperature is below 25 degrees, and this is coming out at about 18, 19. I've taken a sample in my trial jar, and I'm now just gonna pop in my hydrometer so I can get a reading to find out what the current specific gravity is. So this is gonna tell me how much alcohol is potentially gonna be in it. Uh, and it's 1.056. Right, take a note of that and put that somewhere, and keep it somewhere safe. 
Because at the end, when we come to bottle and barrel it, we'll take another reading, and that'll tell us exactly how much alcohol is in our American Oaked Rum Ale. That goes back in, because we don't want to waste that. Time to buy gin yeast. It's a little sachet. Sprinkle it on the top. Now we need to give this a light stir in. I love the smell of yeast when you put it in. It just smells so much like bread making. And beer making. in. Now I'm going to take the lid, popping it on loosely, leaving one little area there slightly open so that any carbon dioxide gas can escape. This now needs to go into my warm cupboard for about a week. Um, in about a week's time you'll have noticed uh, pretty much all of the bubbling and all the fizzing will have subsided and you need to check it again with your hydrometer. You're looking for a specific gravity of 1.008 or below for uh, over a, a couple of days. Once you've found that your specific gravity is below that, uh, it's then time to barrel and bottle. And then what you've got to do is wait a little bit of time after you've barreled and bottled and drink it. <laughs>